Hello everyone and welcome to another Weekly Wisdom. In today's video, we're going to be exploring a topic that is very close to my heart. We're going to be looking at how to structure and build a strategy around a technical SEO audit. Now, I'm sure that you've all taken my site audit course on the SEMrush Academy already, cheeky little plug, um, but now that you know how to actually use all the tools, we kind of need to work out the strategy behind how to implement and also what order do we do the implementation. So today I'm going to dive into exactly how we go about doing technical SEO implementation strategies the type A way. Now, this is our agency's way of doing things. Other people in other agencies will have different ways of doing it. This is just the one that suits us best. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's go over the technical framework. So we've kind of deliberately split it into a bunch of different kind of areas. So all the way from things like hygiene, which is fixing really basic things that the crawler needs to physically access your website, to things like organization. So are your content silos properly organized? Um, page power, looking at internal linking and the flow of page rank to the website. Presentation, do you have the correct meta information? Is schema up to date? Languages, are you actually getting the right SERPs pushing you into, you know, if you've got multiple languages, are you showing up in the German SERP, in the UK, in the USA? And security and code, any mixed content, HTTP, HTTPS stuff, and performances, things like speed. And that's the kind of order that we typically do things in. Um, the reason why we do that is because we find that if we fix a bunch of the stuff like hygiene, organization, and page power early, we're allowing Google to go through the entire site, see everything that's correct, and actually start to understand what's physically on the page. And then we can get into the more kind of meaty stuff. So when it comes to hygiene, what does that mean? Well, um, first and foremost, I want to do a little bit of data collection. So I want to see all of our server errors. I want to see all of our redirect chains. And I also want to have a little look at that robot file just to make sure that nothing's disallowed or nothing weird is kind of going on there. Um, typically inside the site audit, this is inside the kind of issues bit. Um, and if you look at all of your errors, you, that this is where you're going to find a lot of things like we have a bunch of 404s. Um, we have a bunch of... Um, daisy chain redirects things of that nature um typically they'd come under errors and these are kind of high priority things we need to fix okay so next up is organization so think of the organization bit as the way in which the website is kind of put together so even if you've got a technically perfect website but it's a completely flat structure with no content silos it's going to be very hard for you to start ranking for a bunch of long tail things because if everything's hanging off the route Let's say if you sell microphones and every single product is, you know, blue microphones and condenser microphones and this type of brand and that type of brand. If it's just domain name slash microphone product, it's not very good, is it? But if it's things like domain name slash um, type of microphone, then brand name, then we're getting them into nice silos. Um, it's good for the user because if they see, you know, domain name, then brand, then the product, that's quite a natural way to click into something in search. Same when it comes to the actual search volumes themselves. So is it not weird that we're giving the same precedence and closeness to the root of the domain if we have, you know, one big massive term that gets 60,000 searches a month then a tiny little term that gets 100 searches a month, but they're both hanging off the root? So that's what we mean by organization. Um, you'll also need to look at things like orphan pages. So an orphan page is essentially something that is not linked to anywhere on the website. So typically you find these in your sitemaps, you find these in GA where the pages do exist. It's just physically impossible to click to them. And the way the bot is going to be finding them is through external links. Not ideal. We want to fix that. Any canonical problems, so if you've got an e-commerce site, this is really common. Pagination, I appreciate that rel, next, and prev aren't really a thing anymore. What I mean with pagination is if you've got a series of products um, and you need to click to next pages in order to get to them, if Google has to cycle through all of that, um, if it's loaded with JavaScript, let's say, a lot of those products may be invisible. So I just want to see how your pagination physically works and just make sure that it is actually surfacing everything correctly and we can see all of the, the pages on the site. Um, the next one is page power. So this is a really um, basic one, but it kind of gets left a lot of the time. 
Um, and this is looking at things like remapping all of your internal links. So when we're doing a, an internal link remapping, let, let's say we're going to maybe do it on the SEMrush website. So if I was going to do this, we've developed a tool to do this at scale. So I can go site SEMrush and let's say I want to see all of the SEO tutorial pages. So if I have a SEO tutorial landing page, I want on this particular URL, this should be linking to my main landing page. So if we broaden it up a little bit and just do something as basic as SEO, of all of these pages on SEMrush, if they're not linking to their main SEO landing page, then we want to go and add an internal link because essentially in layman's terms, Google's saying of the term SEO attached to this website, we can see that these are what Google deems is the most powerful and most relevant to that keyword. So we should probably use it to internally link. It's a bit of a basic way to do internal linking, but it certainly is a good guide. Um, we also want to fix broken links and just look at your UX and your hierarchy. Now, when I say UX, I don't mean go annoy your designers and annoy your UX people and get them to change everything. What I mean is what we were talking about before with content silos, just making sure that it kind of makes sense um, having flat structures really not good from a search point of view. So just making sure that everything is kind of properly organized is a big one. You find a lot of times out the box with some popular content management systems, things like WordPress, things like Magento for e-commerce, that when they've got a blog section, they have a blog landing page, but then when you click onto an article, it's just root slash article name, which is obviously wrong. We want it to be properly categorized. All right, next one is presentation. I think a lot of you will be very, very familiar with this. So this is essentially looking at your metadata and not just your titles and descriptions, but also at your schema. So go to schema.org to check all the different types of schema that you can put into your website. If you're using something like WordPress, Yoast now does a lot of this stuff out of the box. Um, you can put it in through Tag Manager using JSON-LD, which is nice and handy, um, and use Google's Structured Markup Data Testing Tool to make sure that your schema is actually working and validated and viewable on the website. Um, next up would be your languages. It's really basic. So if you've got multi-language, multi-country, audit any hreflang problems. Um, just make sure that when you are doing this, that if you've got language and country, that you're using the correct country and language codes, because a lot of people can get tripped up there. So for example, with uh, British English or UK English, a lot of people would do ENUK as their subfolder to control all the UK content. It's actually wrong. It should be ENGB. That's the correct code. So just double check with Google to make sure that you're using the correct code for your language and your country variant. All right, next up is speed. Something that we actually leave usually right to the very end, um, just because it's such a big deal to actually make any change with an organization. So we brief it right at the start, but we don't expect them to do anything about it for at least nine months because it's such a fundamental change they need to make to their website. Um, AMP, things like that, again, we're not as bothered unless it's maybe a publisher. If it's a publisher, AMP is obviously massive. Speed tends to get left to the end. We'd run something called the Google Lighthouse report, which you can do inside of, um, you can do that inside of Google Chrome itself. So if I was to go to, let's say this page, I really shouldn't use it. I should throw them under the bus by accident. Uh, if you press function F12, it'll bring up a lighthouse audit and then you just click run your audit. And all that's going to do is run a, a kind of basic speed audit and start to understand when the first contentful paint is. So at what point um, does the, the site actually become um, usable? Time to interactive is also in there. Um, and it will also show your critical rendering path. So SEMrush do really well um, for this, but you can start using this to start understanding if you're doing well or if you're doing poorly. Um, and lastly, but definitely not leastly, is the uh, security and code. So, this is when we're looking at the HTML, we're looking at the CSS, the JavaScript. Typically, if you've got a like a WordPress site or something using a template or it's powered by a lot of plugins, there's going to be tons of conflicting code, tons of CSS, tons of JavaScript that just doesn't get used page to page. The one I see most commonly is if you're using any sort of Google Maps plugin, for some reason it puts it in the template level and it actually loads it on every single page regardless if that actually has a map on it or not. So just double check to make sure that you're not firing code needlessly because that's going to really slow down the site and really damage the performance.
Thank you for watching this week's Weekly Wisdom. If you have your own tech audit strategy, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. But until next time, we will see you later.